In this video, we will cover proper operation of the American France Midmouth aerial platform, including stabilization, aerial operation, and short jacking. Both the LT-93 and LT-75 models will be covered. This video is very extensive. Feel free to take notes and to stop and start as often as needed. So let's get started. Proceed to the location where aerial operation is to take place. Bring the vehicle to a stop and place the transmission into neutral. Apply the parking brake. To begin aerial operation, engage the aerial power. The aerial power switch is located in the overhead control panel in front of the driver. The aerial power switch enables 12 volt power for the aerial device and PTO switch. Next, engage the PTO. The switch for the PTO is also located in the overhead control panel in front of the driver. Indicator lights shall illuminate, showing when aerial power is on and PTO is engaged. Controls in the cab are now set up for operation, so exit the cab. Always close the cab doors upon exiting. This is necessary to allow for complete visibility from either direction of the apparatus, providing for a safer working environment. Visibility is also necessary for viewing the operation of the stabilization system. Once you exit the apparatus, check your sight. Always check for overhead obstacles that will inhibit the operation of the aerial device or would adversely affect safe operation, putting the aerial device and or personnel in jeopardy. Next, check the ground. Check the ground in the areas where the outriggers will be placed. The outriggers will span an area from between 16 to 18 feet when fully deployed. Make sure that the ground surface is suitable before deploying the outriggers. Never place an outrigger jack on a manhole cover or storm drain. Also, check the ground area under the front bumper. There can be no obstructions under the front bumper that would affect deployment of the bumper jacks. If the site checks out OK, proceed with the placement of the wheel chocks. There are four wheel chocks located to each side of the apparatus. If the apparatus is on level ground, place the wheel chocks in front and behind the steering axle tires. If the apparatus is facing downgrade, place the wheel chocks on the downgrade side, front, of the steering axle and drive axle tires. If the apparatus is facing upgrade, place the wheel chocks on the downgrade side, rear, of the steering axle and drive axle tires. The outrigger control stations are located on the left and right side of the apparatus body. The left side outriggers and front bumper jacks are controlled by the left station. The right side outriggers are controlled by the right station. The control station doors shall be kept closed when the operator is not at the control station or the outriggers are not being operated. Both outrigger stations are equipped with green indicator lights that illuminate only when the outriggers are fully extended horizontally in contact with the ground vertically and properly loaded. The left outrigger station is equipped with an additional green indicator light to indicate when the bumper jacks are fully deployed. The left side outrigger station contains the hydraulic system pressure gauge. This allows the operator to easily monitor hydraulic pressure while operating the outriggers. The interlock override switch is used when conditions are present that will not allow the operator to fully extend the outrigger horizontal beam or beams on the non-working side of the unit. This is known as short setting or short jacking. If the outrigger or outriggers are short set, the vertical jack will not deploy. This will necessitate the operator to use the interlock override switch to deploy the vertical jack. The high idle switch is a momentary switch and will operate only when the aerial power and PTO switch are activated. Engaging the high idle switch will increase the engine speed to approximately 1600 to 1650 RPM, allowing the operator to perform multiple functions with the outrigger controls. The high idle shall not be activated when the fire pump is engaged. Apparatus equipped with the fire pump include an interlock to prevent high idle from being activated if the fire pump is engaged. The angle indicator located in easy view of the outrigger stations shows the angle of the apparatus from side to side. 
The angle indicator acts as an aid to the operator for determining the capacities of the aerial device. Ideally, when leveling the apparatus, the leveling ball in the angle indicator should be as close to zero as possible. Having the outrigger's horizontal beams fully extended and jacks deployed supporting the weight of the apparatus and the angle indicator ball in the green or 100% zone, the aerial may now operate at 100% of its load capacity as indicated by the load chart. The load chart may be found on the turntable console or on the platform door. If, when leveling the apparatus, the operator finds that the grade is too great to allow the apparatus to be leveled into the green or 100% zone and can only be leveled into the yellow or 50% zone, Operating capacity, with the outrigger horizontal beams fully extended and jacks deployed supporting the weight of the apparatus, is reduced to 50%. Aerial load capacity in the yellow or 50% zone is indicated by the load chart. The load chart may be found on the turntable console or on the platform door. If, when leveling the apparatus, the operator finds that the grade is too great to allow the apparatus to be leveled into either the green 100% zone or the yellow 50% zone, and the leveling ball in the angle indicator remains in the red zone, a no operational condition exists. The aerial device may not be operated until it can be leveled into the yellow or 50% zone at a minimum. The operator must reposition the apparatus at this time or make necessary corrections to level the apparatus properly. To deploy the outriggers, engage the high idle switch. Locate the horizontal beam control handles and move them to the extend position. This will extend the outrigger horizontal beams on the side of the apparatus you are operating on. Extend the horizontal beams to the fully deployed or extended position. Now move to the opposite side of the apparatus and extend the horizontal beams to the fully deployed or extended position. Note, outriggers must be fully deployed or extended on both sides of the apparatus to have the ability to operate the aerial in a 360 degree rotation. Next, remove the outrigger shoring pads from their holders and place them under the outrigger vertical jacks. Place the shoring pads flat on the ground with the handles up and towards the apparatus. This places the handles under the extension beams, eliminating the potential for tripping. Note, shoring pads shall be used any time the outriggers are deployed and the aerial device is in operation. Now that you have the shoring pads in place, deploy the vertical jacks. Engage the outrigger jack down control handles and the vertical jacks will travel downward. Keep the outrigger control handles engaged until the outrigger jacks make ground contact. Once the outrigger jacks come in contact with the shoring pads, the stabilization process of the apparatus begins. As the outrigger horizontal beams start to raise, the under beam switch closes and illuminates the outrigger deployment lights at the outrigger control station. Continue to deploy the outrigger jacks while watching the angle indicator to level the apparatus on one side. With one side set, move to the opposite and repeat the jack deployment steps. Note, the outrigger deployed lights illuminate only when the outrigger horizontal beams are fully extended. Deploy the jacks until the outrigger deployment lights at the outrigger control station are illuminated. Continue to deploy the outrigger jacks while watching the angle indicator to level the apparatus on this side of the apparatus for operation. Note, the outrigger deployed lights illuminate only when the outrigger horizontal beams are fully extended. At this time, check the apparatus for level from side to side. Utilizing the angle indicator along with the outrigger deployment indicator lights, level the unit from side to side. It is preferred to be in the green or 100% zone, but must be in the yellow or 50% zone at minimum for operation. Note, the drive axle tire should remain in contact with the ground if possible, but is not necessary when the apparatus is positioned on level terrain. 
Once the apparatus has been leveled from side to side, deploy the under bumper jacks. Engage the bumper jack control until the bumper jack deployment indicator light is illuminated. After indicator light is illuminated, hold the deployment control handle for a few seconds. Turn off the high idle and inspect the setup. The apparatus setup inspection shall be performed prior to deploying the aerial device and shall include the following items. Check that all outrigger deployment lights are illuminated. The outrigger deployment light will not be illuminated for an outrigger that is short set. Check the angle indicator to ensure the leveling ball is as close to zero and in the green zone to have 100% of aerial capacity. If the leveling ball is in the yellow zone, the aerial load capacities are reduced by 50%. If the leveling ball is in the red zone, the operator must not operate the aerial device. Check the side of the apparatus, looking for the weight of the apparatus to be supported by the outriggers. This is determined by looking at the rear axle tires. If the bulge has been removed from the side wall of the tires on both sides of the apparatus, you may operate the aerial device. If you are not sure there is enough weight supported by the outrigger, you may adjust the outrigger vertical jacks to remove more weight from the suspension. If the rear tires lose contact with the ground, the aerial may still be operated with the recommended load capacities. The load capacities refer to the load chart. Only after inspection is completed and determined to be correct may the aerial device be operated. To finish the stabilization setup, Remove the outrigger safety pins from the holders and insert them into the closest hole to the bottom of the outrigger jack outer skirt. Now, let's place the apparatus into road position. Check that all fold down steps have been raised into the road position. Next, remove the safety pin. It is imperative to remove the safety pins prior to retracting the outrigger's vertical jacks or damage will occur to the outrigger inner skirt and pin. Place the safety pins into their respective holders. Now open the left outrigger control station and engage the high idle. Locate the bumper jack control handle and engage to the retract position. Retract the bumper jack until the hydraulic pressure gauge reaches its maximum pressure not to exceed 2,000 PSI. This reading indicates that the bumper jack is properly stowed. Continue to operate at the left side outrigger control station. Next, locate the front and rear jack control handles and engage to the retract position. Only retract the jacks on the left side half of the distance the vertical jacks are extended. Disengage the high idle and move to the right side outrigger control station. Once on the right side, engage the high idle. Locate the front and rear jack control handles and engage to the retract position. The right outrigger jacks may be retracted half the distance extended or completely. The amount of outrigger jack deployment will determine how far the operator retracts the outrigger jacks. At this point, if the outrigger jacks are fully retracted, you may retract the outrigger horizontal beams. Once finished retracting the horizontal outrigger beams into road position, turn off the high idle, close outrigger control panel door, and proceed back to the left side. Back on the left side, engage high idle. Next, finish raising the outrigger vertical jacks to the fully retracted position. Retract the outrigger's horizontal beams to the road position. Now, disengage high idle and close the outrigger control panel door. Note, this method of raising the outriggers is known as walking the apparatus down. Proceed with picking up the shoring pads and placing them in their holders for road travel making sure the shoring pad's handles are directed down. Now, pick up the wheel chocks and secure them in the holders. 
Enter the driver's side of the cab and turn off the aerial power and PTO. Fasten your seatbelt, check your mirrors, apply the service brake, engage the transmission, release the parking brake, and drive away.